Someone asked me how to use the master EQ to deal with hiss that is uh, being caused by using microphones in a church setting. And uh, that raises several issues. Currently, I'm uh, using my very low noise microphone. It's a TLM 103. But there's noise in the background, and that's because it's picking up the fan that I have set up to uh, cool the the mini PC that I'm using to drive the Big D desktop that you can see here. So that'll be a good way to illustrate some of the principles of dealing with hiss, because it sounds like hiss. And we can show how the master EQ and other portions of the mixer can be used to uh, reduce or eliminate that hiss. First, it's helpful to point out a few things about hiss and noise in general. It's critical to have good gain staging in the process so that a particular signal is not too low or too loud. And that has to occur throughout the process, the signal process, in order for the sound quality to be maximized. If it's too high, you get distortion. If it's too low, then you do introduce hiss uh, because the, of the noise floor. Like I said, this particular mic I'm using has a very low noise floor. So I wouldn't be able to hear any noise from that mic unless I just completely reduce the gain on that channel and just crank the, the, the master volume and the channel volume, then I might hear a little bit of noise. But typically, on a mic that's going to be used in any kind of vocal situation, it would be difficult to introduce hiss just because of the mic signal. So when I'm doing live stuff, I'll use some uh, dynamic mics, some Sennheisers. And, uh, and those are also fairly low noise compared to other aspects of the signal chain or the environment that could be causing noise. So you can hear that noise in the background. At least I can certainly hear it, and I think it can be heard on this recording. So one of the first things I'm going to do is to go to my EQ for that channel. So we're going to click where we've got the channel selected as channel 20. That's my mic channel. So let's hit the edit on the upper left hand. And we can see at the top here, right now it's showing the effect sends. So let's go over to the EQ on the upper left. Click on that. And you can see I have an EQ curve here. And what that is, just so you can see what I've selected, I have uh, channel EQ presets. That was up on the upper right that I clicked that presets button. And then I just selected male vocals one, and I loaded that. And that's a good quality preset. So let's figure out where this uh, noise is coming from. But what I'm going to do for purpose of this illustration, I'm going to click on the right, it's the, the low pass filter. So it dictates where, at what frequency that starts rolling off. So let's, let's slide that left. For this purpose, we're going to go ahead and make that 36 just to make it a very steep slope. So we're going to gradually come back here. I can still hear the hiss. I happen to know it's down here about 500 hertz. You can hear what that does to my voice. All right, so that's one kilohertz, and I can't go any lower on that, but that gives me an idea. And then I can also take number two and reduce it even more. So we're going to reset that, and then uh, let's reload our... Uh, our vocal EQ 
the male vocals one. All right, so I know that now that when I go to the master EQ, I, I know about where the frequency is, so I don't have to be hunting for it. But you can always deal with a certain amount of hiss by going to the source of that hiss. In other words, whatever device is causing the hiss, you can adjust the EQ using this parametric EQ that's on each channel. Now, if I want to go to the master, if I'm having hiss that's still occurring that I want to try to notch out uh, on the master EQ, I can just simply press the master below the master slider on the very lower right and make sure it's on the EQ on the upper left. And now I can see it's a graphic EQ. It's not a parametric EQ. At first, I didn't like that. But, but I've come to really appreciate it for a variety of reasons. And so uh, I don't mind it at all. So we know that we're getting that hiss. Let's start uh, about 1,000 hertz. Let's just see what happens if I click on that band and then just with my fingers slide it down. So I've reduced that hiss significantly. Okay, and if you want to see how that compares on my vocal, 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 testing, one, two, testing, one, two, testing, one, two. So it's going to have some effect, obviously, on the, on the sound output. But by reducing that hiss, it, it may be preferable overall not to have that so prominent. And I can adjust other frequencies as well. 800 hertz, 630, 500. So those bring it down to quite a bit. But again, you, as you can tell, I've really reduced the uh, bass content in my voice by doing that. Yeah, you can hear that. It's, it's much different. So I would probably want to be a lot more, and you can double click on any one frequency to zero it out. I'd probably want to be a lot more selective in what frequency I'm using to notch out that hiss. But you can see what happens when I bring that up and down at, at one kilohertz. Uh, 1.33 has a little bit of effect. 800 is quite an effect. Uh, 630, you're getting the lower content of the hiss, and it's not really... 500 is almost non-detectable. So the two that probably have the most effect are 800 and 1,000. And I can notch those a little bit without completely destroying my the quality of my sound. But that's what you're dealing with. Now, the other thing, too, to keep in mind, and I'm going to go ahead and reset that by clicking at the bottom. The other thing you have to keep in mind is that you can only deal with noise that's coming into the mixer. So if you have a, uh, a noisy amplification system, you're not going to solve that problem with the mixer because it's it's post mixer, and so that's a different issue. If you have a noisy amp, this this is not going to solve that. And again, I want to emphasize gain staging. So you want to make sure that you're pushing enough volume at each stage of the uh, process so that you're getting appropriate gain staging. So let's just take a look at this mic. So again, this is channel 20, and let's um, look and see what we have here. So channel 20, it shows that I've got the gain selected so that it's peaking out about, oh, I don't know, 15 uh, decibels full scale. So on, on digital mixers, zero is, is full scale. So what you want to see is something that's lower than full scale so you don't get into digital clipping. That's just generally not a good idea. Produces a bad effect. So I, I have this set so that I'm peaking even if I raise my voice a little bit at about 12 decibels full scale. And then I have the 
the, the, the main um, volume slider at zero decibels. And that just, and then, then the, um, the, uh, also the uh, master is set at zero decibels. You can see that on those two sliders. Uh, and where the, uh, the meters are peaking. And that gives me a good signal. So I'm getting plenty of gain into the, into the channel. I'm not too low on that, and I have plenty of, of uh, volume going into the master. So that's good gain staging. Now, if I turn down the, uh, the uh, master outputs on the UI24, if they're too low, I'm not going to get enough signal into my front of house system. In other words, my uh, amplification system, or the monitors for that matter. So those master levels need to be high enough, and I have to tell a story on myself. When I was doing a recent uh, production, I, I wasn't getting enough volume on the house, and I couldn't figure it out. And then I, someone finally pointed out that my master levels, these are the physical rotating knobs on the front of the UI24R, were set about halfway. And I, I must have done that because in my home studio, I just didn't need the output driving the speakers by cranking those all the way up and that solved the problem and I was able to get sufficient gain into the house to have the control I needed and the volume I needed. That was just a function of not having good gain staging coming from the mixer into the front of house system. Now one other thing to keep in mind is you can also use this for uh, the auxiliaries, and uh, I'm going to just show that real quick. Now I can slide over here to get the auxiliaries and show those, or on the bottom right here, I can just sit, hit aux masters, and then just click on, double click aux one on the bottom, for example, and that'll bring me, it'll show the compressor, I'm going to go to the EQ, then you can see the slider, and you can get whatever aux channel you want, and then you can you can then uh, adjust the EQs on the sends, the individual sends. Because say you can have your own separate EQs for that. You can have separate gates, compressors, and that's one other thing to keep in mind is that uh, if the noise is from a, an instrument, for example, like a, uh, a single coil. A pickup guitar that has inherent uh, noise because uh, of the uh, nature of the pickup, um, then you can also use a noise gate on that, and that can be done on the uh, master, but probably more appropriately, we'd use that. Let's go back here and get, yeah, so it's more probably more appropriately done on, on a uh, on the particular channel. So I want to click, uh, say, a stomp, uh, XL, HX, and then I can edit that, and then I can go to a gate and set up a gate for that. So that's probably more appropriately done on an individual channel than it is on the master EQ section. I'm going to show one other thing here, and that is the uh, feedback suppression. So let's go to the master EQ. And down at the bottom left, the automatic feedback suppression is currently uh, off. We can set that up and we can have which one we want to have it uh, uh, showing. So right now it's fixed and live and you can have six uh, frequencies for each of those. So what I would do is uh, use the fixed to uh, uh, set it up initially. So what happens, you can see that it's already notched. The blue little spiky thing shows a notch at about three, 315 hertz. Now we're not hearing that. And that's uh, what would be occurring on the master uh, uh, outputs. And so there's a, that notch, and uh, and that comes up automatically. If we go into setup, we can see now it's got two 
different frequencies, 352 hertz and 994. Now it's done 1333, 130. So it's picking up these, uh, these bands. Now if I am getting a lot of feedback on a particular frequency, I can also use a slider to further notch that. But this is what the uh, the, the uh, feedback suppression is doing. And then when we get ready to go live, then we just switch over to live mode, and then you've got six additional frequencies. So we do the fixed for the uh, the pre uh, the pre performance setup, and then live gives you some more. And uh, this this is very handy because it. Uh, it really is very automatic and can save you uh, some embarrassment when you're uh, trying to reduce feedback. And again, that can also work with the uh, with the uh, sends, the effects, send, aux sends rather. Let's go to our aux sends. Let's go there and go to the EQ there. So we can set that up and and and, uh, and turn it on separately. So it's got its own set of uh, filters and so forth for each auxiliary channel. And that is just extremely helpful. So if I'm running uh, an aux in to uh, on stage monitor, I can I can deal with that feedback separately from my mains. Um, and you can have you can have multiple sends for multiple monitors or in-ear monitors or however you want to do it, and they can all have separate uh, feedback suppression going on. So that is extremely helpful, I find, as well. All right, so I think that covers kind of the basics of, of what the question was and some other, other stuff I just wanted to bring up in conjunction with the, uh, the Master EQ setting. Anyway, so that, uh, that gets us back to where we started. Have a good day.